Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through activities, songs, and Bible stories. If you are a regular, I want to welcome you back. And if this is your first time, I want to let you know that we have this program every single Sabbath. It's a new program where we have different activities and we learn about Jesus and how to connect with God in a different way. So come back, visit us, and I hope to see you again. Now, have you seen all the smoke outside? Have you smelled all the smoke? Whoa, it is crazy outside. It has been like this for several days now. California, we have so many fires in California. Forests are burning and we have the firefighters who are out there protecting and trying to put out those fires. We want to pray for the firefighters today. So remember in your prayers to pray for the firefighters for their safety. Ask mom and dad to pray for them because they are out there trying to put those fires. And the, the least we can do is to pray for them Pray that God keep them safe. And thank you all the firefighters, the first responders who are out there protecting us. Not only them, but we also want to thank all the nurses and doctors from our church and the ones who are not from our church but are out there fighting this coronavirus and helping people get well. We want to thank them as they continue to fight this disease. But all our frontliners, if your mom, dad, or if you know anybody who is fighting this disease, this disease don't forget to thank them, okay? Pray for them, thank them, and let them know that we are praying for them too. Speaking about doing something like the first responders, the firefighters, the nurses, the doctors, this week I did something that I normally don't do. As you can see, I'm wearing my kindness t-shirt. Do you guys remember this t-shirt? is when we went to give out blankets to the homeless last year. It was November of 2019. I had this t-shirt on and we were giving out blankets because it was an act of kindness. Okay, it's a t-shirt from the church. You remember this, right? Well, this week I did an act of kindness that I normally don't do. You know what I did? Along with uh, several people from the church, a couple of Kids Connection teachers as well. We came out to the church and we donated blood to the Red Cross. I think I still have, yep, I can still see it right there. I donated blood this week. And I am, and I hope that with this, the blood that I donated, is go it's going to help other people who are in need of blood out there to survive. So I want to thank all the people that came out to the church this week, including Miss Marina came out, Miss Patty came out, teacher uh, Robert came out. All of us donated blood and helped the cause with the Red Cross donating blood. So thank you everyone. And that's why I'm wearing my kindness t-shirt today because of the act of kindness that I did this week. All right. So now let's get our program started. I'm going to invite all the boys and girls to stand up, get ready where you are, and let's sing our song of the day together. And we'll see what th this has to do with our program today. Because no matter what I am facing, Jesus is with me. Let's sing our song of the day together. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue A little sad but I know just what to do Whoa oh oh Whoa oh oh I have learned that I can go to Jesus He lifts me up whenever I need it Whoa oh oh
gives me joy in every situation Keeps my spirits high no matter what I'm facing Now I'd like to invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes, so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you are our God and because you love us. Thank you for another Kids Connection program. We ask that you be with us as we worship your name today, as we learn more about you. Be with all the firefighters that are fighting the fires out there in the mountains. Be with all the nurses and doctors who are frontliners fighting this disease. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, now let me ask you something. Um, in today's missionary story, we're going to hear a story about a man. A man who loved sharing the love of Jesus and sharing Jesus to other people. And one day, he met a man on the street that shines shoes. Have you seen anybody shining shoes? No? Ask mom and dad because I'm sure that mom and dad knows what I'm talking about. There are some people that shine shoes on the streets and they make money. They charge people to shine their shoes so everyone can have a beautiful shoe that is clean and either tennis shoes or, or, or your dress up shoes. So this man was shining shoes on the street and someone shared God with him. Let's watch our missionary story and see what happened. Yulian could barely feed himself from the money he earned shining shoes. He set up every day along a busy walking street in Nicosia, Cyprus. Most of his money went to buy cigarettes and alcohol. A decade earlier, Yulian had immigrated to Cyprus from Bulgaria to look for a job. One day, Philip, a global mission pioneer also from Bulgaria, walked by and greeted Yulian, asking if he needed any help. Yulian was surprised. No one had asked him such a question in a long time. It was nice to hear someone taking an interest in him and speaking his native language. But Yulian didn't answer the question and just offered him a shoe shine. While Yulian shined his shoes, Philip told him that Jesus loves each one of us, no matter what situation we're in. The mention of Jesus grabbed Yulian's attention. The next day, Philip returned and asked again if Yulian needed any help. Yulian was surprised that the stranger had returned. This time, Philip didn't need a shoe shine, so they just talked for a while and looked through the books that he brought. This became a routine. Sometimes, Philip read the Bible to Yulian, and eventually, the shoe shiner opened up about how he'd worked in construction after arriving with his family in Cyprus. He lost his job and was kicked out of his home for drinking his family and friends had rejected him. One day, Yulian led his new friend to the abandoned building where he slept. His bed was a hard floor. The sight brought tears to Philip's eyes, and they prayed together on the street. Yulian felt valued and felt God's love through the pioneer's actions. It was at that point that he gave his life to God. Although he'd drunk and smoked heavily for 35 years, Yulian decided to give up alcohol and tobacco that day. His family welcomed him back home, and now he tells everyone who will listen about his love for God. Philip regularly leads a Bulgarian language Bible study. Over three years, eight people had been baptized through Philip's work, a significant number for a country where the Adventist church has only about 100 members in a population of more than one million. He often spends his time mingling with people, getting to know them where they are. Please pray for pioneers like Philip, who are sharing a message of hope with their communities. Thank you for supporting Global Mission. Let's continue to help the missionaries with our prayers and our offerings so they can continue to help and to share the love of Jesus with other people out there. Thank you so much for your support. Now today, I'm going to play another game with you guys. Yes, it's a game. Do you have a ball at home? Do you have a ball? Yes. Do you see what I have back here? I have my own version of basketball hoop. And this is not a basketball, but this is the ball that I had today. So it doesn't have to be a basketball. It doesn't have to be a hoop. You can have an empty trash can, make sure it's clean. 
okay? And I want you guys to play a little game. But first, let me show you what we're gonna do. I have on the table here, because so you guys can see it, but I have a trash can. It's empty. Here we go. It's empty. And I'm gonna come all the way to the trash can and take three steps back, okay? One, two, three. I am all the way out here. Now, I am going to shoot 10 times the basket. Let's see how many times I can make the ball inside of the trash can as my basketball hoop, okay? Let's see how many times I am going to hit it in and how many times I'm going to miss. And I want you guys to do the same thing at home. Find a trash can and try 10 times and see how many times you hit the basket or you score inside the, the bucket and how many times you miss, all right? So here we go, three steps back, I'm right here. Are you ready? With me, here we go. One, two, and one, in. All right, let's go for second. And this is my spot right here. Here we go. Two, in. You, how many do you think I'm gonna hit it in? How many? Everyone? I'm gonna miss one, I'm gonna miss two. Let's see. Three, in. Let's, let's continue. That's three, in. Here we go, four. Four, I almost missed this one, but it's four and I hit it in. Here we go again. Oh, five, I missed one. Let me get the ball here. Five and I missed one. Here we go again, three steps back. Six, but I missed one. Here we go, one more time. Seven and I missed one. Here we go again, almost there, three more. Oh no, I missed. Hold on, let me get the ball. Here we go again. So eight, I missed two. Ready? Again. Nine, and I missed two. One more, one more time, one more time. Here we go, last one. And I missed. Out of 10, I missed three. But I scored seven times. I made seven shots in the bucket. I wanna know and I wanna see how many can you make it? Can you make all 10? Remember, three big steps. One, two, three, and you shoot. I wanna see how many you can make it in. Send me an email, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com and let me know how many you made it in. I also wanna know if you guessed it that I was gonna miss three. So I missed three, but I made seven. Huh, I wonder why I missed three. I wonder why I only made seven in the bucket. Hmm, do you think, uh, do you think that I can make all 10? I think I can make all 10, but wait, not now. You know why? Because I haven't practiced. I haven't had enough practice to make the ball in all 10 times. This is actually the first time that I'm doing this and I'm trying from this distance here. But you know what? I am 100% sure that if I practice all week and I come back next Sabbath and I try it again, do you think I'm gonna get more shots in? I think I'm gonna get more shots in the more I practice, don't you? Why? Because when you practice, you get better at what you do, right? So if you try and you make only one or you make two or you make five or seven or six, whatever you make, if you want to get better, you have to keep practicing so you get better at what you do. I'm going to tell you a story about a man. His name is Dave Hopla. Do you know who Dave Hopla is? Ask mom and dad if they know who Dave Hopla is. Maybe someone who really likes basketball will know who Dave Hopla is. Well, let me tell you, 
Steve Hopla is a person that he is a basketball hoop coach. What do you mean by that? He's not a basketball coach to everyone in every game. He is a hoop. It means that he teaches you how to shoot and make it in and get better at what you do. One of the things that Dave Hopla said in one of the interviews is that when they ask him, how are you so good at shooting hoops? You know what he said? He said, because I practice a lot. Dave Hopla is so good at shooting hoops with a basketball that one time he made 1,234 hoops without missing a single one. Whoa, that's a lot of hoops. Imagine over a thousand hoops. One, two, I did 10 and I almost got tired and I missed three. He took 1,234 and he didn't miss a single one. And then he missed the 1,300, 235. That's when he missed. But imagine a person that shoots that many hoops without missing. And Dave Hopla is the guy that tells us that he practice every day to shoot hoops. And he teaches people how to shoot hoops and how to get better. Professional players, he teaches them how to shoot hoop and shoot right, how to get it right. Dave Hopla makes 98% of his shots. That means that every 100 shots, he makes 98 shots in and he misses two. That's a huge percentage. I wouldn't do that. I, I, I miss 30% of my shots when I was doing this right now. That's because I missed three out of 10. But practice, practice, practice. Be persistent. If you don't get it right the first time, you try it again and you keep practicing until you get better. When mom and dad ask you to do something at home, do you get upset? Are you complaining because you don't want to do it? Do you think that makes mom and dad feel happy? What do you think? And do you think that if you practice more, would you be better at what you do at home? Today's story in our lesson with our teacher we are gonna hear about we're gonna hear a, a story about how she was rewarded by working hard when you work hard getting the baskets your reward is that you're gonna get better and you're gonna make all 10 baskets in at one point let's see what happened and how she was rewarded as she was persistent in doing what she was doing and no matter what she was facing, she was persistent. No matter what you're facing, remember to always ask Jesus to help you get better in what, at what you're doing. Be persistent. Let's sing our song of the day one more time. And no matter what I'm facing. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue A little sad but I know just what to do Oh, 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 oh I have learned that I can go to Jesus He lifts me up whenever I need it Oh, oh
Thank you for singing with us. Now let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this program. Thank you because you are with us. And thank you because you help us to get better at what we do. Help us to be persistent and help us to get better at what we do and never give up. We know that you are with us. We know that you will, you will protect us. Be with all the boys and girls. Protect them at home from this virus, as well as all the firefighters and all the nurses and all the doctors that are responding to this emergency out there. Be with them. Keep them safe. Protect them. And Jesus, come back soon so we can go to heaven and live with you without problems where we won't have fires and, and viruses and, and problems anymore. Thank you for answering our prayer and for being our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. Don't forget that this afternoon is the second Sabbath of the month. So we have our Parents Connection. Tell mom and dad, mom and dad, go meet other parents on our Parents Connection Zoom this afternoon. It happens this afternoon. So don't forget that tomorrow we have our kid to kid zoom games again we come back remember last week we took a we took a break because it was a vacation or it was a, a three days uh, weekend so some kids were uh, weren't home or were out of town including myself I went to the beach last week it was nice and cool so and it was also clear because of the um, all the fires and everything it was a clear uh, weather and clear air I, I want you guys to remember when you are outside make sure that your face is covered for two reasons now one for the virus protect yourself and two because the air quality out there look outside you smell all the smoke right okay so protect yourself make sure that you're not gonna inhale you're not gonna breathe in all that those all that that ash that is flying in the air so make sure that you stay inside and and uh, whenever you go outside ask mom and dad or wear a mask all the time i love you guys i miss you so much Thank you for being a part of another program. I hope that God blesses you and protects you every day until we meet again. I'll see you next week on another Kids Connection program. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Well, good morning, boys and girls. I hope you've all had a good week. Happy Sabbath to you. I'm going to go ahead and sing our good morning song. If you want to sing along with me, you can do that. Good morning to you, good morning to you, how are you today? Good morning to you, good morning to you, this happy Sabbath day. Good morning to you, good morning to you, how are you today? Good morning to you. Good morning to you, this happy Sabbath day. Well, I would like to welcome you today. I would like to welcome Skye and Paul, Ethan and Alice, Sunny, Rio and Gia, Amy and Camden, Reese and Sammy. Happy birthday this month, Sammy. Carlina, 
Tayel. Tayel also has a birthday. Happy birthday. I'd like to welcome Aiden and Vita and Max, Caitlin, Ariane and Vashti. They both have birthdays this month. And Moses. I'd like to welcome Estella, Jax, Janie and Jade, Josiah, Nicholas, Federico and Francisco. I'd like to welcome Will and Mia, Andrea. Andrea has a birthday this month too. Happy birthday. Joshua, Joy and Jael, Luke and John, Cody, Benjamin and Leah and Ethan, JR and Seth and Zori and Baby. I'm so happy that you could come today. We're going to talk today about Ruth. Well, today I want to tell you a little story. It is about a grasshopper. One day, a grasshopper was hopping through the grass. It was chirping and singing. It passed an ant who was carrying an ear of corn. And the grasshopper said, why not stop and talk to me for a little while instead of working so hard? And the ant said, well, I'm helping to lay up food for winter when it gets really cold. I think you should do the same. But the grasshopper said, there's plenty of food right now. Why should I bother about winter? The ant went on its way, carrying food to its nest. When winter came, the grasshopper had no food and he was very cold and hungry. He saw the ants passing out food to all of their relatives. They had collected food all summer, but the grasshopper did not do any work. This is called a fable, and it illustrates a point that if you don't do work, then you don't get the good things of life. God is not going to magically give you all the good things of life. Sometimes you have to do things to get good things. In the Bible, in Proverbs 6, verses 6 to 8, it says, Go to the ant, and look how hard the ant works. You should do the same. Why do you think working hard is important? It's not fun to work hard, but we all need to work together to make sure we have what we need. Today, we're going to learn about the hard work that Ruth did and what she got as her reward. Ruth and Naomi had just gotten back from Moab. They got to Bethlehem just in time for the barley harvest. The men were out in the fields gathering up the grain. Ruth said to Naomi, let me go out into the fields and pick up grain after the gatherers so that we will have something to eat. God had told the Israelites that when they went out to harvest their field, they should leave some of the grain lying on the ground for the poor people who didn't have any food, and then they would come out and pick it up. Well, Naomi said, go ahead, my daughter, and pick up grain after the people in the fields. So Ruth went out and started picking up grain after the men who were out in the field. And she worked very hard. Pretty soon, the owner of the field came and saw how hard she was working. And he asked his men, who is that that is working in my field so diligently? And they said, that is Ruth, the Moabite. That is Ruth who came back from Moab with Naomi. He noticed how hard she was working and he went to talk to her. And he said, keep following my men and gathering grain after them. And when it is time for lunch, you can come and eat with my men. Well, Ruth said, why are you being so kind to me? And Boaz said to her, you were so kind to Naomi to come back with her from Moab. You could have stayed there and been with your family, but you chose to come home with your mother-in-law. At mealtime, Ruth went and ate with Boaz's men, just as he had told her to do. She ate until she was full and she had some of the grain left over. She worked in the field until evening. It started to get dark. So she went home to Naomi and showed her the grain that she had left over and the grain that she had gathered. She was so thankful and grateful to Boaz for what he had done for her. He was so very kind. And Naomi said, where did you gather grain today? And she said, 
I gathered grain in the field of Boaz. And Naomi said, thanks be to God. May Boaz be blessed by the Lord, for he is our kinsman redeemer. Now that meant that he could buy back the land that Elimelech had owned. Ruth and Naomi could not do it because women were not allowed to own land back then. So Naomi said, bless Boaz, for he has been so kind to us. Well, it was very good for Ruth and Naomi to have Boaz around, part of their family. Having family members around, like grandparents, aunts or uncles, cousins, really helps whenever something hard happens. This is called a support system. And if you have family around you, mommy, daddy, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, that is called a support system. Ruth and Naomi did not have a support system, but God did not forget them. God saw that Ruth and Naomi had need for food and support. And since he had given the law about following the people around in the grain fields and picking up grain, they had a way to get food. Not everybody followed this law. Some people thought that they wanted to have it all for themselves. So they picked up everything out of the field that they could. They didn't feel the need to help the poor people, but Boaz did. And when he saw how hard Ruth worked to gather the grain for herself and Naomi, he had a great respect for her. He treated her with kindness and got to know her instead of judging her because she was poor. Now, last week we learned that faith is a belief in something. Do any of you remember what faith in God is? It is choosing to trust God in every situation. Let's say it one time and then we will try to do the motions. Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Now you see if you can see the motions while I do them. I'm going to do them up a little higher so you can see them this time. So pretend you're tearing a piece of paper. Rip. So without Faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. See if you can try that with me. First, the piece of paper. Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Now we have one more week to try to learn this memory verse. So you think about it during the week and see if you can do the motions. All right. Well, our love for God is connected with our faith in God. We can trust God because God is good and loves all people. God has shown us who he is by giving us the Bible and sending Jesus to the earth. God loves to reward those who seek him. How did God help Ruth? Ruth was diligently seeking God. She left the false gods that she had worshiped in her hometown and made a decision to follow the one true God. God promised to reward her. God did not magically give her food. But when she went out into the field to work for her food, God was guiding and protecting her. Ruth's faithfulness was rewarded. We don't always know what way God will help us, and sometimes it's not the way we think. But many times, God gives us a blessing in our work. God gives us strong bodies so that we can do the work. He gives us a good mind to think and he gives us many opportunities to do what is right. God sees all that we do and wants us to do well. 
It wasn't easy for Ruth and Naomi to leave Moab, but they knew that that's where God wanted them to be. Working in the field was hard for Ruth, but she did what she knew she needed to do. God led her to Boaz's field, and God provided for her and Naomi. What are some things that you find hard to do? I know sometimes it's hard to get up in the morning. Sometimes it's hard to do our schoolwork. Sometimes it's hard to, to obey mommy and daddy and keep our rooms clean. How do you feel when you feel like something is hard to do? Do you feel like you can do hard things or do you feel like you want to quit? Well, when you feel like you want to quit, you should remember this verse from Colossians 3, verse 23. And whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability. Do it for the Lord and not for men. And that is our craft today. Take a look at that. This is a picture of Ruth gathering grain in the fields. You can print it out and it will look like this when you print it. Now I colored it and I glued some little bits of paper, little yellow bits of paper on there to stand up for the grain. You can do that if you'd like or you can just color it. Parents, if you decide to color and put the little paper on, I used cardstock for that and it works much better. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and say our prayers. Well, this week, I want you to remember to do everything 100% for God. God notices what you do. He notices when you do what is right. It matters to him. Remember, God promised to reward you for every good thing you do. Dear Jesus, thank you for everything you've given us. Thank you for the work that you've given us to do and help us to do it the best we can. Amen. Well, I hope you have a good week. I will see you next week. Bye.